So I wanted to ask you about this notion of addressability, and we've spoken about it. You've been a champion of it for many years. We've sort of defined it as uh, what the cable box can do, what the satellite box can do. Uh, now with this big move to OTT, the opportunities are changing in the way that we define addressability. So how is that scope of addressability change or could so it change? It's expanding, clearly, but um, when NVIDIA came along, uh, NVIDIA technology as opposed to NVIDIA, the chip maker, uh, NVIDIA technology was about controlling addressability through a cable set-top box or a satellite subscriber box. Um, OTT uh, networks are inherently ad-servable, so they are addressable, right? Smart TVs have technology for uh, commercial switching, so those are addressable platforms as well. Addressability has always been contemplated as a combination of technologies with broad reach. And um, I think at the end of the day, linear TV is going to be fundamentally serviced by set-top box commercial switching. Uh, OTT um, by ad serving of some form. Um, and uh, I think the significant game is going to be who can put a package of capabilities together to enable addressability across all of the various platforms that will become available. So speaking of NVIDIA, we uh, caught up with Dave Downey in, mm -hmm. in London last I week saw the interview. For, for an update. Uh, what's your take on, on their progress and, and what their, how their market situation is evolving? So NVIDIA is globalizing very rapidly. Uh, I mean, they are the platform of choice for satellite tech in the United States. They have a number of cable infrastructures as well. Um, and they enable addressability through a number of technologies that include channel switching, that include uh, set-top box pre-cached commercial content. So the switching literally takes place in the set-top box. Um, and they have technologies that will begin to service uh, things like OTT and even smart TVs down the road. Um, so they're a significant player in this space and they are going global at a very rapid pace. So Erwin, I wanted to talk about smart TVs um, in terms of their role as a data source, particularly through uh, ACR data, uh, what the significance of that is and where that might be going. It's another source of data. I mean, to me, as a, if I put my media buyer hat on, my media investment hat on, um, I think the quality of data needs to be scrutinized. Uh, there is work to be done there um, because editing rules and in tab and out of tab and all those things need to be established firmly. Uh, but it is a critically valuable source of data and I think the winner in the space will be the party that takes the cable set-top box data, combines it with smart TV data, and OTT sources and VOD sources and DVR sources and stacks the whole thing because linear is not going away. It is heading towards a bottoming out at circa 30% of all media consumption, but that is still many, many years away. And getting a glimpse of one component of viewing isn't enough. You've got to roll it all up. And finally, Erwin, uh, we're getting ready for CES in a couple of weeks. Uh, what are you looking forward to uh, exploring for yourself and uh, on behalf of uh, Group M clients? So uh, I have always come at CES as an exercise that avoids shiny new objects. Because if you look at the history of CES over the last 20 years, each year's shiny new object proved to be irrelevant three years later. I mean, I remember when 3D was the big thing, everybody was talking about it. We weren't. We said it would go away. To me, you've got to look at CES through two sets of lenses. 
let's call it the verticals and the horizontals, right? The verticals are consumer electronics, computing and AI, uh, and chip design, um, automotive, integrated home, healthcare, and mobility. And the <coughs> lines between each of these verticals is blurring because of the three to four underlying technologies that enables all of them. So take nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is enabling screens of larger and larger size at lower cost each year, right? <coughs> um, chip design is enabling um, tiling in televisions. It's enabling auto autonomous vehicles. It's enabling artificial intelligence. It's enabling just about everything, right? Um, nanotech is enabling healthcare. Um, computing is enabling healthcare. And so if you, the horizontals <coughs> to us are the uh, nanotech, um, screen architecture, chip architecture, and communications, i.e. 5G. And if you look at everything through those two sets of lenses, you begin to understand what the implications are to stuff three years, five years, seven years, ten years down the line. 